Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. WB Jones, how are you, buddy? Sam and Sam's in the house. The next day, you called me up. What's up, everybody? That's a warmer. You came over and you fell into my YouTube heart. user, I got you. How are you doing, brother? Well, I know what I feel. DP, Please what's happening? Breezy's Briar. Mike Hayer's here. How are you doing? You. Robert Donahue. How are you doing, Robert? Randy Fishing. Yeah, baby. Nicky Brink is in the house. You better believe it. Cameraman Nick is here. You better believe it. What's up, Larry? How's everything? Joseph Cascarino's here. John Dunnington. Larry Shope, Vic Storpe, Ray Cruz. What is happening? Man, we got a great show for you guys tonight. Cameraman Nick's back. He was feeling under the weather last week. Yeah, you got to be back, right, Mike? That's right, pal. You're having it. Jack Hinkle's here. Tammy, what do you say? Kayuka Tammy's here. All right. Beautiful. Tim McSee, how are you? Danny Pouse, Robert Mills, Jim Saban, Kenny Clemmer. What's up, Kenny? Randall Miller's here. Yeah, baby. Man, oh, man. Good to see everybody again for another great edition of Tackle Shop Live. We are here every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. My name is Mike Acord. This is George Acord. Behind the camera is cameraman Nick. And we have a great show for you here every Thursday night. And, uh, man, we got a lot lot to talk about tonight we got some great tackle talk and some good uh tournament talk of course as always but first we are on the eve of something special the eve of something special that's right the summer slam tournament entry starts tomorrow Friday, April the 19th is the start of the entry for the SummerSlam tournament that we put on every year. And this year we are heading back to the Upper Bay and um, we're going to fish out of Anchor Marine as always. And we are starting to sign up tomorrow. Fired up about it. Yes, sir. We're going to do... uh... We're going to actually have a cutoff this year at 200 boats Yep. Um, due to parking. You know, 200 is going to be our max that we can fit on the property. So, you know, get in early. Yep. Uh, lock your spot down. And payout, of course, is going to increase uh, because of the 200 boats. And it's already the richest team tournament on the Chesapeake. And... You know what they say, the rich get richer. <laughs> yep. So there you have it. We are going to start signing up for that for you guys that never heard of it before. It is one of the greatest tournaments ever. And the entry fee is very unique. Unlike all other tournaments where you pay a cash entry fee. And uh, if you don't catch any fish, you lose that cash. We do a little different around here. Ours is a uh, purchase of our sponsors tackle that is g loomis shimano jackal and power pro those four companies if you uh, come to the shop or go online you got to purchase 250 dollars of those products per boat so that's you can split it up between uh, you and your partner and that is your entry fee so essentially if you have a bad day like we all do like i had a couple weeks ago on local lake here you don't lose the money you get to keep your equipment and that is your entry fee and you get to fish out for the rest of your life or as long as you, as long as you have it. And, uh, it is very unique. And our idea behind that is we want 
all kinds of new fishermen. We want new anglers to the sport of tournament fishing. We want to introduce you to tournament fishing and we want you to feel like you're not a donator, you know, like, like you feel like a lot of guys won't fish them because they feel like they can't do well and uh, they don't want to waste their money. However, what you'll find out is, is that when you do it this way, you are a winner no matter what. But number two, you would not believe how many newbies, first timers go down there and fish that tournament and whack them and end up cashing checks becoming you know one of the guys who gets the what is that top 25 top 20 uh even top 10 we've had uh guys that never fished there before never fish a tournament end up in the top five yeah so you never know and and um it'll it'll allow you to get into tournament fishing see what it's all about see what the excitement is all about and experience what the pros do on tv that you watch and they can have it for yourself which it's, it's uh, extremely a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of fun so um we got a lot of giveaways we're going to give away there uh, we're, we're hoping to do a nice tackle toss for you guys which is pretty famous down there and it's an overall good time we have a great way in we have a great way in crew and uh we are looking forward to getting as many people as we can down there but like george said there is a 200 boat cutoff so get in get early get your stuff um, and you can buy purchase in the shop here and get your application, or you can go online, download the application and sign up through the website with a purchase on the website of those four companies. And then that is your entry fee. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. So what we're, uh, we are on the eve of that, Nick, what do you think? Well, some other great perks about that tournament are, we always make a lot of people famous because yes. We go around live. Somebody has a tendency to like, hop on their boat and, you know, do interviews. And then the cool thing, too, is if you get fortunate enough to win the tournament, you get to come to Tackle Shop Live. That's right. And tell us all about it. That's right. We will definitely make you famous. If you win, you're going to get on on the show and you're going to tell us, hopefully tell us what was the trick and keys to win in that tournament and how you became champion of one of the greatest tournaments of the year down on the upper bank of all time of all time <laughs> now i will say this also um where the tournament is being held for those of you who've never fished it and are familiar with the area is the chesapeake bay the uh, the top end of the chesapeake bay the upper chesapeake bay all the locals call it the upper bay um mm -hmm. and it is it's a famous fishery for good reason. It has a tremendous population of big fish. Um, and we are staging this tournament at the absolute prime time. So, you know, the potential for the dirty 30 is there. Mm -hmm. um, the potential for you can't even cash a check with less than 20 pounds is, is real. Yeah. Uh, the potential for eight and nine pound fish is very real. And so it's a fun event. It's designed to cater to the very novice beginner as well as the seasoned professional. It's professionally run. Our weigh-in services are handled by a group called the Chester County Bassmasters who do a bunch of these tournaments and they are their pro level weigh in it's so that is that's actually that is actually to me you know that part of the experience of the tournament is key you know when you come in everything is smooth sailing the weigh in is is done right um and it's just the cherry on top it's a lot of fun. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, and it's a it's a it's a great it's a great experience. So we want to see you there. We're going to get two hundred boats in all likelihood, and we want to see you there. We want you to join us. Uh, we're going to be handing out swag bags to every boat. Pretty sweet swag bags to every boat. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the world famous tackle toss where we make it rain thousands of dollars of tackle. 
uh, while the tournament crew is tabulating the results, we have a little diversion for you where we make it rain. Oh yeah, a lot of I fun. Mean, we we have uh, we have a good we have a good event planned for you. We're really looking forward to it, and uh, we hope you join us. Any questions? You can reach us here at the shop. And guess what? We're one month out. Yeah, right on. One month out, ready to go for it. Very, very exciting. Uh, so, also, if you guys could, why don't you like and share this this uh, show tonight and um, share it with your friends. Tell your friends about it. That uh, would help us out a lot. And you can comment at on, on these platforms also. Uh, and then also join us on our TikTok and Instagram. You can go there, see different content. Um, if you, and also if you go to our website, make sure you sign up for our emails because we do special emailers to, uh, to, to those guys that get on there and they're the first to know about hot products that are coming out and also any special deals we got going on. You'll be informed through the, through the emails. Okay. Well, let's get this show on the road. We'd like to call this section tackle talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bring it in, Nick. We got one of the uh, biggest tackle boxes around, and we love to mess around with tackle and love to talk about tackle. George, what do you have new and exciting for us? Well, you know, we have uh, some interesting stuff tonight. We have um, we have terminal tackle all the ways up to some beautiful rods. We're going to break them down. We're going to discuss it a little bit. Um, uh, get your guys' opinions on a few things. Mm. And um, uh, you know, got a couple rigs I want to kind of mix in there too. So mm -hmm. we're gonna do it a little different this week. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. So let's start off with some baits we've been talking about a little bit. And I want to kind of reiterate. So one of our favorite uh brands of course, is uh, Reaction Innovations. Love these guys. We love their products, right? I mean, let's not get it misunderstood here. Or as kids say, Nick, let's not get it twisted. <laughs> um, so the creature bait category, like the sweet beaver, they invented it, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I can't say they invented the boot foot swim bait, but they might as well have because they were the first to market with this. Mm -hmm. The little dipper, actually the skinny dipper. That was the first one, right? Um, these guys just push the envelope on colors. They are often imitated. Um, What's the saying? Often imitated, never duplicated. Seldom duplicated. Seldom duplicated. <laughs> well, they're often imitated. Okay. Um, you know, they've, they, they set the mark with the sweet beaver. They set the mark with the smallie beaver. You know, uh, a lot of people in the industry thought that they were a little perverted. You know, it's not the case, actually. Yeah. Sweet, uh, sweet beaver was created after Andre's win at Beaver Lake. Yep. Smallie beaver. After Andre's win at Beaver Lake the next yeah. year. Yep. Um, they do have some interesting color names, though. You know the thing about them, George, their colors are so consistent. You ever notice that? I yeah. Mean, I mean, they they are always the same, and consistency is well some of the best. Let me explain to you. They shoot their own products. Oh, yeah. That's... So, you know, you have total control when you make your own products. A lot of companies have their products made by other companies, which is not to say that's a bad thing. Right. You know, if you're a big company and you're a major account of a company that, you know, specializes in injecting plastic, first of all, they're really good at what they do. Second of all, you're their big, you're their big company. They're going to do the very best for you. So it's not like you have an inferior product, but... When you have your own machines and you're shooting your own, you're getting rid of that middleman, you have a little more control there. 
And I think that's one of their secrets. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also like bass heads. The only other company that comes to mind when I think of these guys is Missile. Yeah, exactly. You got like this office full of like insane bass heads. Yeah. Um, tournament guys. Making baits, right? Cut cutting edge guys, tournament guys. I remember when Reaction Innovations made baits and nobody would buy them. They were a West Coast company, uh, Arizona to be exact. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a West Coast company. They had a line of baits. They had a flipping tube, which they no longer have. They had a wacky rig bait called the Ball Buster, which was made to hook in the middle with little balls on the end of the, of like a Sanko type, which, which they no longer have. Uh, they had an underspin called the Schoolgirl, which they no longer have. But, you know, it wasn't until Andre, who was touring on FLW, at the time, won the FLW event on on Beaver Lake, which was held every year. That was a regular tour stop because it's a, it was the home of of the FLW. Mm -hmm. um, he won it with the Sweet Beaver, and then all of a sudden, all holy hell broke loose. Yeah, and yours truly here. Yeah, has been with them boys since the very very beginning. So we have a great relationship with them. We work with them on every aspect of, you know, selling their products. And, you know, we're going to bring you a few things tonight. What do you got for me, Nick? Well, I love that story you were talking about at the beginning. Because I remember Mike telling me a story about you guys were one of the first. You've seen that they won these tournaments. Oh, we got to get these baits. Yeah. The problem is nobody knew what the hell they were. No. So you had all these baits. We had a, we, we, George bought a tractor trailer load of this stuff, you know, and, and we put all of our money on this and went to, uh, uh, back end, there wasn't the internet. So you, you know, we went to shows and we went to this, uh, big giant bass show right down the road from our store and set up in front of some of the biggest bass heads in the area and couldn't give the stuff away. I mean, literally could not give it away. So when they first hit the scene, right. Um, some of their spokespeople were unknown bass professional bass anglers by the name of um aaron martins mm -hmm. and um skeet reese um you know and nobody knew who they were they were they were they were tearing up the west coast yeah and you know they were fishing some of the reaction products yeah um there was a guy by the name of robert lee who won three bass events in a row on their tube the boom boom tube, which doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. Flipping it. Yep. And the rest, as they say, is history. You yeah. know, they they push the envelope in every aspect, you know, from frog design, from walking bait design. They had a buzz bait that was killer. Um, they had hooks. They had they had it all. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, the straight shank flipping hook that every company in the market has today. Nobody had that hook except for reaction innovations. And it was called the BMF. Um, and it was made by Gamagatsu. Gamagatsu still makes the hook today under their name. Yep. Um, you know, and what happened with these guys is they'd get in and when everybody jumped on it and copied it, they'd get out. They're like, okay, you know, we're two steps ahead. We're going here. Here's what we're doing next. So, you know, by the time you catch up, we're moving on. Yeah. So, you know, there's something about that spirit and that, you know, that swagger that we like. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that we've caught a truckload of fish on their baits. Yeah. And we've sold many truckloads of their baits. Yeah. So what we're going to talk about tonight, and we mentioned this in passing, um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Doug, they did have a pocket rocket. They had the, everything. The wacky rig worm. They still do. <laughs> so this is a new, their newest color, and it's it's available in, in only a couple baits, and it's called Electric Shad. Beautiful color, man. So you got that 
little bit of violet in the belly. Laminated to, you know, that kind of brownish back. I mean, it just, it's an electric shed. It's a killer electric shed. So this is the Little Dipper, right? So the Little Dipper, for those of you who don't fish it, you know, this is an extremely versatile bait, right? So it's awesome on a ball head, right? You just put it on a ball head. If you're fishing numerous shallow water situations, or if you're if you're forward facing sonar fishing, that's money. Mm -hmm. Slow roll it, jig it on the bottom in colder water. Let a pendulum down through fish to Mickey style. Money. Straight up. Right? A um, couple times of the year, like early, early fall, when they're suspended on bait. Um, early pre-spawn. You know, another, another killer way to fish this bait. Right in... Right in post spawn when things get a little funky, is on an underspin. There it is on a Buckeye um, Sioux spin. Yeah, perfect fit. Beautiful. Got the little blade there. <clears throat> little underspin, killer, killer. Um, and there's just so many ways to rig this thing, right? But that color, okay. So for example. One of my favorite chatterbait colors is Golden Shiner. Right? Golden Shiner Jackhammer. And, you know, when I'm in cleaner water and I'm on a shad bait fish bite, one of my favorite all time <clears throat> jackhammer trailers is a little dipper. And that electric shad. And that golden shiner. Yeah, it's fish catcher. I mean, come on. Fish catcher. That's money. Yeah, you know, think about that bait too, uh, for you smallmouth uh guys. You know, it's it's a great search bait. You know, you can you can on that ball head jig, you throw it out, reel it back, throw it out, reel it back, you cover a lot of water with it. Um, and the other thing I noticed about the little dipper on a ball head. Um, over any other boot foot bait, and I fished a lot of different ones, there's nothing that thumps harder than the Little Dipper. How about the body roll, too? The, that's what I'm saying. The thump on that is the most unbelievable. Now, and the body roll. If you look at that, I think that's where you get the thump is, is more, more with, the, with the body roll of this bait. But if you look at that bait, the way that it's cut, um, you know, you look at it, it kind of kind of has these unique cuts in it. That is all in the process of making that bait do this. And that's I'm legit. And when I tell you it, it it thumps, it's dunk, 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 dunk. It's rolling like it rolls almost ninety degrees and flashes the two tone colors. So uh, that's why you see a lot of two tone colors in there. You get that nice flash out of them, and you and you can actually see your rod tip thumping like that and and go ahead and look at all the other baits out there and fish all the other baits and watch your rod tip there's nothing that moves your rod tip like this thing does well you can it's also unreal. rig it on a belly a belly weighted <clears throat> swim bait hook right now this one's a little small this is for our next bait but if you if you d took like this bkk and a 2-0 or if you took a hayabusa or whatever whatever your favorite belly weight is with or without the blade yeah that's great for coming through like grass. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something that that Mike and I have done forever and a day, going back to the very beginning of time with the skinny dipper, when we didn't even know how to fish it. When the skinny dipper first came out, our friends at Reaction Innovation sent us a big old Ziploc bag of handfuls of the different colors, just all. And we didn't we didn't even know how to fish the thing. Now at the time, it was the hottest bait in Florida. Yeah. Uh being fished 
basically with a very light bullet weight, Texas rigged with a wide gap hook and swam through the grass. You know, we, we were just trying to figure this thing out. And, you know, a lot of people were using belly weighted hooks. At the time, they didn't even really even have good screw lock belly weighted hooks. It was more like the old school belly weighted hooks. But we decided to use a screw in bullet weight and a wide gap uh, EWG style hook, which to this day, if we get into a cover situation where we want to swim all different sizes of them, depending on we'll just match the hook to the size, you know, anywhere from an eighth to a quarter ounce bullet, uh, screw in bullet weight, you know, whenever that weight is firmly attached to the bait, okay, a screw in bullet weight, a, a, a tightly pegged bullet weight, um, a belly weight, a jig head, um, any of those methods, you get that really thumping body roll that Mike's referencing. And he's 100% right. That is the difference between the Little Dipper and almost everybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, when this, when this category of bait became big, every company out there capitalized on it. Now, obviously, the Kytec brand has probably maximized it more than anybody. But do not overlook the Little Dipper. And I'm going to tell you, as a chatterbait and a swim jig trailer, mm -hmm. Now, another color that's overlooked. And, you know, right after the spawn, clear water, around grass, you're making a horrible mistake if you overlook this color. This color is called bullfrog. We got your watermelon pepper on the back. We got your pearl pepper belly. Okay, we're going to fish it all the ways that we discussed, right? Plus, the new <coughs> jackhammer that came out last year in the blue back herring. You got to see this. And this is, uh, this is killer. I like matching my trailers to my... Jackhammers a lot of the times in clear water. I mean, if this was in an art galley, some somebody right now would be putting in a twenty five thousand dollar bid, right? Probably be walking like one of them big standard poodles, smoking a cigarette with one of them big filters on it, and putting in a twenty five thousand dollar bid on that piece of artwork right there. And that's a clear water killer, okay? Swim jig, chatterbait, all the other ways we mentioned. Bullfrog. Get you some bullfrog, okay? These laminated colors are a little rare. So when they come out, we get hundreds and hundreds of packs of them. Mm -hmm. And when they're out, like you don't see them for a while. Sungill is right now. Yeah. Don't come crying to Uncle George. He tried to tell you. Now, I want to jump over to their, I think, overlooked bait. Um, it's over. It's definitely overlooked up here in the Northeast, but it shouldn't be. And it's called a shiver shot. And it's a drop shot bait. It's a Demiki rig bait. Fork tail. Here it is on a here it is on a on a little underspin. Money. This is the electric shad color. So they ran that electric shad in the little dipper, and they ran that electric shad in the shiver shot. Okay. Money. The other way I like to rig it is on a hover rig, core tackle. Hoverhead rigs up really nice on there. Great, great setup. 
uh, for your forward-facing sonar. Drop shot. This thing nose-hooked on a drop shot is killer. Um, and they have, this is electric shad, which is the new color, which say less. Um, smoke grape. Smoke grape used to have a different name that was not politically correct. <laughs> so now it's called smoke grape. But the first, it used to be called the first, the first name was a word that rhymed with statutory. Smoke great. Yeah, that's one thing about their color names. They have some pretty pretty colorful color names. Smoke great. Huh? Smoke great. Yeah. Great. Very colorful. Killer color. Say, tell us some other, other color names they have. Well, White you can trash. actually you could actually make a white um, trash and you can uh, actually Spanish make up fly a, you can make and, up a poem. Yes. You could make up a poem. Spanish fly you know, and, about uh, like you know <clears throat> what you did on a Saturday night with the color names, you know. It's pretty funny. <laughs> but he's cleaned it up a lot. The packaging was very 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 cool for a long time too. Well, you know, you get older, you get, you know, you get you get pressure. Dirty Sanchez, Mike Sholly. <laughs> Politically correct. Yeah, they got some good um, ones. <laughs> you know. But anyways, that is our Reaction Innovations Electric Shad Color Review and also the review of Bullfrog. No extra charge to you. That was free content. That was like extra innings, Phillies game. I know, man. I think? tell you, people don't, they don't get it with this, with that little dipper and that skinny dipper. They, that skinny dipper with a 4-0 extra wide gap pegged with that um, bullet weights, uh, uh, screw in, screw in bullet weight head. I, I mean, I think it's such a cool bait to throw in grass. You can worm it right through there, you know um swim swim a swim bait right through the thickest grass and man, we caught so many fish doing that over the years it's it's just a chatterbait trailer it's just a great bait killer chatterbait trailer killer swim jig trailer i can't i honestly i don't even think we can count the how whole, many fish we caught on them things. the whole swim jig when you're reeling a white swim jig in with that the whole entire swim jig is doing this and you're getting more bites because of it I'm telling you they got the Alabama shake. I got the reaction innovation shake. Yeah, the thing is really crazy good. It's killer. Get up, get yourself a lot. Don't get one pack. Mm -mm. Get like as mm -mm. many as you can afford and then go a little bit over that. Mm. Yeah. You're going to thank me later. All right. Um, let's switch gears. Okay. Let's talk hooks. So, Gamagatsu, now this was actually a classic release, um, and, you know, it didn't fit my schedule for the classic, so we, we're releasing it now. It's officially being released now. So, they're doing their, they're doing their, 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 their best hooks. So, the round bend offset, good luck seeing these. Okay. Round bend. See the bend? That bend's a perfect U shape. That's where the term round bend comes from. Now, let's look at the same hook in what's called an O'Shaughnessy bend. Or a lot of people, like myself, will call it a sprout bend. Okay. The top hook is a sprout bend or technically an O'Shaughnessy bend. The bottom hook is a round bend. The top hook is a 3-0. The bottom hook is a 4-0. So these are these are J-hooks, offset, offset worm hooks. You know, they call them J-hooks because they're shaped like the letter J. And this is going to be your standard, your standard worm hook, right? So if you're if you're fishing a, you know, just a Texas rigged worm. You know, a lot of people are going to go for this style of hook. Very good hookup ratio. 
because of the line pull to the point relationship. So the 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 angle that's created by the by the point to the eye that pull point that that that's a very efficient hook set high rate, high percentage the round bend is super popular with carolina riggers super popular with some bulkier baits like a like a sanko um the sprope the sprope bend or what they call the o'shaughnessy bend really popular with the traditional worm you know the the any kind of like regular bodied worm ribbon tail straight tail okay now the 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 new hook is all about the coating so it's called nano alpha and it's got that coating right you can feel that right yeah super smooth and it's also like four times more corrosion resistant than black nickel. So if you're fishing in tidal water environment, um, you know, if you're if you're de- if your day box where you keep your hooks is not as dry as you'd like it to be, and your stuff gets wet and you don't do a good job maintaining it, um, you know, I could go on and on. Won't rust as quick. Uh, four times more corrosion resistant. Super slick. Of course, they did the sprout, they did the round bend, and then, of course, their two most famous hooks ever. The top hook is a 5 aught EWG. The bottom hook is a 4 aught Superline EWG. So if you're fishing braid, if you're fishing a heavy rod, if you're pitching, flipping, <clears throat> that bottom hook's where you're going to be, the super line. It's a thicker, stiffer wire. It won't flex as much. If you're fishing, you know, a traditional setup, you know, medium heavy, 15-pound line, you know, that top hook's where you want to be, EWG. For the most part, again, um, you'll notice on this hook, the, the points are very much in line because this hook is designed to be hooked what they call text posed. So, you know, I like this hook on a Sanko myself. And of course, you guys all know what text posing is. Um, and if you don't, you're about to. So over there, right? Pull that up on the shoulder. See where that hook wants to come through. And then you can kind of tuck that in there. Okay, text posed. Solid hookup. You got plenty of gap for bulky baits. Um, very good hook. Very good track record. Again, the heavier flipping, pitching, heavier cover, stiffer rod. You know, I always go with the super line. Four aught super line's my go to flipping hook. Unless the money's on the line, then I go straight shank. Um, yeah, so nano alpha, full line of EWGs, full line of super line EWGs. Full line of of offset worm, full line of offset worm round bend, no bulk bags. The traditional black nickel hooks that you are used to are still in stock and will be for quite a while, and you can still get your 25-count packs. Um, Great hooks. Give them a shot. Gamagatsu Nano Alpha. Uh, Sam, uh, we lean towards the O'Shaughnessy style hooks when we're fishing, uh, like a ribbon tail worm, like a six inch ribbon tail worm or, a or a straight tail, uh, Texas rig and a straight tail worm, you know, a, uh, trick worm or something like that. We like the O'Shaughnessy style. Yeah. The round bend is also a dynamite hook for like a Carolina rig. Um, yeah, you know, on a little bit of a bulkier bait, like maybe, a 
um, you know, a, a creature style bait, like a brush hog, you know, love, love to, love to, love to, uh, Carolina rig a brush hog, a baby brush hog, um, rage bug, you know, love to Carolina rig those bigger, bulkier baits at round bend works really well there. You can also go EWG there. Personal preference comes into play there. Um, but that all four of those, those are the four most important hooks in our lineup right now. I'm sure this nano alpha is going to expand, but that's where you're at right now. <clears throat> and uh, they're 449 a pack is where they start. So they're not, the price really didn't change. A couple pennies here and there, depending on the size of the hook. Uh, but it really didn't change. And uh, yeah, great hook. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, James. You know, that George, George was talking about with the super line hook. You know, you really, if you're using a braid or, or a, like a stiff rod, um heavy line and you're flipping you know short line a lot of pressure on that you have to use the super line hook have to use it got it because i'm telling you you'll have heart you'll have heartbreaks if you don't There's well what happens is and and if you're not exposed to this you don't understand it you don't believe it you don't even think about it is you you, you jack that fish and you're fighting that fish and you lose them right away what actually happened was, was your hook flexed open. You can see this hook's flexing. Your hook flexed out, changed that angle, and then when, you're, when it, it pops back into shape. So you don't really understand that that's happening. It's happening because you're on a heavier rod, like a heavy power. Mm -hmm. Braided you're line. You're on braid or you're on does it a lot. heavier 20-pound line or 17-pound or line. Short quarters, big fish, cover. You want the super line. This is an open, more of a medium heavy rod, 15 pound line or less open water hook. Twitching a super fluke. This hook is freaking money. Okay? Money. Twitching a fluke. EWG, not the super line. Now, if you're trying to set up a specific, like you want that bait to fall quicker. You can use a super line to sink that super fluke quicker, but those are little tweaks that you make. That's yeah. the general gist of those hooks. Lighter rod, lighter tip, lighter line. You need that thinner wire to for penetration and hook set power. You know to be able to hook set uh, uh, a three o hook. Yeah. So that the you know, thinner diameter uh, is a deal. Now the other thing about that coating is penetration of the of the hook when you do set the hook. It it supposedly it's. Ain't that, no supposedly about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's better, it's better for hook setting, better for the penetration on the hook set. So, um, you know they have a what's the other hook with the coating on it? Their finesse, the finesse hooks. Well, they have that whole entire line. Yeah. Uh, the TGW tournament grade wire. Yeah. And they all have a nano coating on them also. Right. So that's um, that's, kinda that's a whole different. Different. That's a similar coating. Right. Different wire. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's not new. It's right. It's, it's it's a new version of that. New version coating. Yeah. New, it's, it's a, a different it's color. A slightly different coat. Yeah. yeah. It does look a little different, yeah. but it's the same basic concept. But you can feel it when you grab a hold of that hook and you slide your fingers across. You can feel it. It's totally different than it's not you know than uh than the, the original black nickel. So I mean, there's a there's a definitely a spot. That's in the a box valid for it. point. I mean, if if you're if you're used to the tournament grade wire hooks, you know the green packs um then you'll this this is right up your alley mm -hmm. so it's your more traditional shapes in that coating but even more even a more slippery version of that coating and a more corrosion reversion of that coating are we splitting hairs i don't know yeah you know I haven't used hooks yet yeah um <clears throat> so doug's asking Seven two medium light extra fast zodius casting 15 pound braid 12 pound leader what i would call a finesse technique by all means regular ewg you know the regular ewg the offset worm the offset worm round bend is where it's going to be for you that super line you know only in like very specific circumstances where you're trying to sink something that's weightless but no 
EWG, regular, all day long. Yeah, because of that soft tip rod. Perfect, perfect setup. Braid and, uh, you know, the 15-pound braid is no stretch with the leader, and it's a heavier leader, but your rod, your rod is 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 allowing that that flex built into the whole setup. So it's perfect. It's not gonna it's not gonna straighten it out. It's perfect. Yep. Um yeah, so that's the nano alpha. Yeah. Gamagatsu. There, there you go. Gamagatsu. We got them in stock in large quantities. Um okay, so guys, we got another new line of rods in. Good God, when's it going to stop? It's never going to stop. So, you, like, man. literally in the last three or four weeks, we've added in three complete rod lines. We've added in the GLX line from Loomis. We've added in the Physics from St. Croix. And now we have added in the Megabass Orochi X10. Um. So the the Mega Bass Orochi X10 is a like hybrid of the Orochi and the Destroyer P5. Um, is the best way to sits right in between those. Break that. Well, it's 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 the the carbon that's used in that is the same exact carbon that's in the P5, but they're using a uh eco friendly like natural type fiber that's exhibits carbon like I'm glitching up here because these words are just pissing me off <laughs> tendencies so basically we have a tree hugger rock <laughs> so i mean you know you can uh, address your inner feelings for mother earth Oh, well, if somebody ever I gets on this your, rod. If somebody ever gets on your shit about, you know, not loving the, the environment. Yeah, I mean, if Pete is fucking there, with you at the boat ramp, you're like, yeah, yeah dog. Yeah. <laughs> this shit's natural. <laughs> right? This is, I mean, for God's sakes, BMW and Lamborghini are using this. <laughs> Um, now all seriousness aside, um, you know, Mega Bass is the ultimate in minute details, the ultimate, they go, they go over the top and they do it with pride. Yeah. Um, and I, and that's kind of what makes a Mega Bass, right? So we have the Orochi X10. Okay, and every aspect of this rod is impressive. The real seat, this is a spinning rod. This is a, this particular model spinning is called the Medusa, which we're going to talk about in a second here. Um, but this real seat, you'll notice how small the grip is. There's basically a minute four grip that's actually part of the main grip carbon real seat okay even this little nut down here this is machined from a solid block of aluminum okay just because it's mega bass up up locking super comfortable we had uh we had all kinds of spinning reels on here and it was beautiful um you've got you know, the traditional high-end guide train that you'll find on P5. Great friendly. Um, now, the Medusa. So, the Medusa is a F3, which means it's a what we would call a three-power. But that's a light. That's a light. So it's a, a solid tip. So this is a rod that they are, that is being sucked up by the forward-facing crowd. So from here up, this is a solid carbon tip. And if you recall, we talked about this last week or the week before. Yeah, week before. 
in the in the um, Shimano uh, X Pride rod, and this tip is what is giving these baits this excessive rolling and twitching action. Uh, it's it's a thing for the finely tuned Demiki rig guy. That's a thing, okay. So this rod actually primarily crafted for that, but it's also like a awesome finesse rod. So that's the Medusa. These rods are all three hundred and ninety nine dollars. Okay, um, it's a organic. Again, not joking around here. It's an organic carbon is the best way for me to describe this to you. Married up with the same exact carbon that's on the Destroyer P5 line. So it's and and, and it's extremely light. It, it, it very, very, very light. Rock. Very light. And it's a big there's a big jump from uh, the traditional Orochis to the, the Orochi X10s. I mean, the weight is is unbelievably different. So, this is the cliffhanger. And this is a rod that they specifically built in their casting line for BFS. And I want to show you that the casting model because of the real seat. So, we have a completely split real seat. Two pieces. Right? Fully exposed blank, carbon, you know... Split grip, obviously, the same machined. Beautiful. Uh, but we have this in a BFS rod with a beautiful extra fast taper. Precision. These rods are precision, crisp tapers. They're beautiful. Just telling you, there's a reason we got involved with them. They're freaking gorgeous. Yeah. Now, my pick... Not that you want to hear it, but I'm the one talking. <laughs> so you're going to kind of have to. Plus, I hope you want to hear it. But my pick is the Jade Python. Hmm. Okay. Which, you know, it's a more traditional. It's a three and a half. Seven foot. Traditional. Spinning rod. And I love it because. Um. This is going to be my, if I was talking to you and you were here talking to me and you were saying, I want a versatile spinning rod that I can use for a wide range of my bass fishing techniques, I'm going to talk to you about the Jade Python. First of all, it's extremely light. I mean, it's ridiculously lightweight. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Feel how light it is. Feel that? <laughs> that is, I mean, it's light. I'm holding it down. Um, beautiful light. taper. Very light. Okay. That's why another thing I noticed about these rods, they have really different tapers than the, than their, you know, traditional tapers that you beautiful. see, see on the Levante and the, uh, and the Orochi. And then last but not least, I think there's, I want to say there's like 10 to 12 models. And I think every model but one's in stock, and that model's actually not going to show up till like July. Now, the thing about these rods that Mega Bass is doing, you know, you're familiar with their bait releases, like their Respect Series baits and their Japan only colors. You know, they're once and done. Well, these rods are going to be twice a year. So we just got this shipment in now. Okay. This one here is called the Bandersnatch. Okay, this is going to be your go-to. This is going to be your go-to seven-foot F5. It's for snatching the giants out of the cover there, Nick. You know, spinner bait, chatter bait, pitching a jig, worming. Beautiful. Beautiful. But, as I was saying, um, these rods are going to be released... Like, they just released them, <clears throat> and then they're going to do another shot in, like, you know, roughly September. Might be before that a little bit, but basically it's twice a year. Um, so it's not a it's not a day-in and day-out rod. You know, like Levante, 
Destroyer P5, Orochi. You know, you can pretty much buy 90% of those rods any day of the week. There's going to be that model that gets hot that's not available. That happens with everything. Uh, that happens with every brand. That happens. This this rod is going to be like like limited mm -hmm. release. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and then another limited release. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Mega Bass Orochi X10. Um, yeah, you know, beautiful stuff. We've been fishing, Greg. Uh, Greg, we've been fishing Mega Bass for. Uh man, it's got to be going on ten years. Well, I mean, we have three generations of Orochi. Yeah. Um, um, two generations of Levante. Yeah. We've been fishing. We've been fishing a long time. You know, we. I I, I don't say we have a ton of them, but we. I bet you we have uh, six or eight of them bouncing around in the boat at all times. My favorite is um the Orochi flat side special great rod and also I, I can speak for Mike here yeah we are we both love the Orochi shaky head rod a shaky head rod is a great great action and you know one of the things about that is if you want a nice great rod for fluking throwing a super fluke that's a great rod for super fluke fishing Another rod that we like a lot for a couple of like radically different techniques is the Extreme Mission Type F. They call it the EMTF. It's a mm. seven five, mm. um, yeah. extra fast taper, it's a ton of backbone, mm. light tip, beautiful Carolina rig rod. Mm -hmm. And I also like it for a low water, clear water rod where I got to bomb a swim jig or I got to bomb a spinnerbait. I can I can AT and T them. Look at you know that. What that is, don't you, Nick? Sam's got the no. uh, huh? No. Reach out and touch them. Nice. That's right. Sam Sam Sam's got the and I remember when he bought it too. The Felissa and the Exist as a combo. At yeah. Fest. That was awesome. Yeah, the Felissa seven five, uh, like a F two or three spinning. Yeah, beautiful drop shot finesse rod. Jot. I've seen that rod in, at work with just under a seven pound smallie one day on Lake Ontario. Wow. With a size four. Yeah. Drop shot, drop shot hook. hook on six pound fluorocarbon leader. Mm -hmm. um, How deep, George? 35 foot of water. It was a 611 smallie. And the combo that. My 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 buddy, who's actually the the national sales manager for Mega Bass, was using was the Felissa, with an exist same combo that Sam and Sam was talking about. Yeah, and that drag was just like, and that little hook looked like a splinter in that thing's mouth. Yeah, Joshua Torres uh, Orochi with an O. Put an O on the front of that thing. I don't know. You were saying that one rod's called a banner snatch. Bandersnatch. I thought you were going to say Reaction Innovations named it. Nope. I, okay. Nope. That's like that's like the Furious Hog Snatcher. Yes. This is a Bandersnatcher. All right. Got gotcha. you. Yep. yep. Snatching up giants, Nick. Throwing them snatch baits out there. All right. I'm going to cut this loose on you real quick. I'm going to show you some secret backroom stuff. Hmm. Now, everybody, you don't want to miss this. Shiver shot. one -o. Titan Diver from BKK. Wait till you see this bad boy. I got the pressure of the camera on me here. I'm trying to rig this up. Am 
like this is where you you hit the button where it goes the timer like uh, yeah what is it jeopardy or something i know like i've been working on some right? sounds but i haven't been getting too far with it All right get your get your measurement there come out the back right now this has a little silicone slider on it push that up underneath the bait to keep it tight against the bottom of that hook <laughs> Huh? When that thing falls and that blade's just kind of flickering and it's doing its body rolling. Mm. Game over. Mm. Yeah. Good looking bait, Nick. You just saw that. That's all I got for you tonight. It's a long winded, but I had fun doing it. I know you guys did too. I'm hoping you guys out there enjoyed it. Tackle talk for this week. Got a big week planned for you next week with some really cool new stuff. But that's all we have at the moment for wow. Tackle Talk. Wow, it was great Tackle Talk. Really excited about Good all stuff, that. stuff, huh? I'm excited about that. You got any questions about that, Nick? Actually, I do. I knit. Because I know you guys like to throw the little dipper. Love awesome it. Awesome bait. We don't like to throw the little dipper. You love it. We love to throw the yeah, little dipper. Yeah, I don't dipper. know if I've ever been on your boat or seen rods that you don't have at least a skinny dipper, little dipper on a rod. Did you ever see the box of little dippers that we carry in our boat? I'd only imagine. It's pretty freaking impressive just to look at it's it. It's a big one. So my question is, when do you like to throw a skinny dipper or, or a little dipper as a trailer? When do you choose which one? Freaking Nick Moy. He, I mean, he asks the kind of questions that you Cam only hear on 60 Minutes. Right. <laughs> Cameraman Nick. When they're interviewing like somebody crazy, that's why he's that's why he's part of the crew. It's interesting because a lot of cases, when you're catching them on a little dipper, you're going to catch them on a skinny dipper. Um, there are springtime scenarios where you know if you're if you're um in a situation where you would typically throw a little dipper, which a lot of smallmouth fishermen like to do, you'll actually do better in certain circumstances with a skinny dipper. But my day in, day out pick is going to be the little. The little dipper doesn't just catch small fish. It mm. catches big fish. Does. But the, it's kind of, I'm trying to make sense here, but I'm trying, it's trying to, like, it might not be coming out right. If if you're on a smallmouth bite, on a river or a lake and they're spawning throw the skinny dipper if it's a cold front if it's pre-spawn if it's not the best conditions or if it's post-spawn by all means throw the little dipper post-spawn that little dipper can save your life okay now you got to have the right colors, okay? You have to have white trash. That's going to be your white chatterbait trailer, your white swim jig trailer. Um, you have to have sun gill, okay? That's giving you your perch look for all you guys fishing on fisheries that are infested with perch or bluegill. Um. You have to have that sun gill. You have to have, and these colors you have to have in both sizes. Okay, no sales pitch here. This is, yeah. this is you coming out on my boat, and we're putting a beat down on some fish. Um, you have to have grape, which is now called smoke grape. You have to have that. Okay, that color is mandatory. Um. That one there, I would I would probably just keep in the little one. You have to have bullfrog. Okay, that's your that's your post spawn. That's your baby bass color. That's your clear water color. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotta have that. You have to have the black and blue. They call it penetration. It's black laminated to blue. That's your trailer for your black and blue. Chatterbait, your black and blue swim jig, and in dingy water in a smallmouth river situation, 
Thank me later. Um, you have to have that. You have to have green pumpkin watermelon laminated. Got to have it. That's your green pumpkin jig color trailer and by itself in clear water. Um, deadly. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but those are colors you got to have. Now, I think you got to have some electric shed. I'm really excited about that. Okay. Electric this shed. This is brand new. I haven't had a chance to fish it. I've fished it in other baits, but not quite like this. Yeah. I'm going to put electric shad down as um, 2024's hottest color in Little Dipper. We'll go down in infamy in this shop as electric shad. Um, I, I tell you, Nick, that, yeah. that Little Dipper, skinny dipper thing, you know, um, as a trailer now, I'm just talking as a trailer. Uh, if you're fishing like a, a lot of pressured water, you know, a lot of these guys are throwing the full size chatter baits with the big full size trailers on them. You can go behind, you know, you can go in there with a, with a, with a little dipper on. You see how compact that, I don't know if he still has that rigged up. I'm never unrigging it. Yeah. You see how much shorter and compact that looks, Nick? See, see where the skirt is as opposed to the tail. That's a totally different look in the water than That's a, money. a full size swim bait on the back. So, you know, it, get, it gives you that that little different look than than what everybody else in, is is chucking. You know, there'll be and you'll see the guys all around you, you know, especially in places like Potomac River, you know, uh Upper Chesapeake Bay out in the flats when you got 10 billion guys slinging uh chatter baits and and that kind of stuff um around. That could be that in the spring, that could be uh any lake USA. Yeah, anywhere. I mean, you know, everybody's <laughs> chucking the big the you know, because a lot of times that there's you know um, you want to match the hatch and in the spring the, the, there's bigger bait fish around. So you want that. Usually you do want that, but when you get that pressure and you, and you shorten up and you go a little smaller. And I think that's why the mini max craze is taken off like crazy is because it's that real small, different sounding small profile, uh, that gives, gets you more bites. Oddly enough, <clears throat> speaking of the mini max. Mm -hmm. That's a little too much trailer for the Mini Max. Yeah, I haven't tried it on a Mini Max yet. It's a little too much trailer for the Mini Max. The little dipper. The Mini Max just kind of comes through the water with a little dipper on it. You got to go down to a skinnier trailer on a Mini Max, and then the Mini Max comes to life. Yeah, but you know, it's that. I think that's why guys are really, really. There's a lot of people starting to migrate. That's killer right to there. That Mini Max. That's killer right just there. Just for that reason, the high pressure water. Right there, killer. Now, uh, throw in the little dipper and the skinny dipper without a trailer. Um, you know, of course, you're you're set up right now for the for the skinny dipper because it's the early spring and it's the it's the pre for us it's the pre spawn and a little bit of spawning going on. You want to throw that big one, and uh, you know that's that's matching the hatch. That's what the fish are eating. I don't know if. Uh, George was out the other week and he caught some fish that spit up a 10 inch smallmouth. You know, uh, he caught a five pounder that caught spit up a, a, a 10 inch smallmouth. So you know, these fish are eating big baits or eating big stuff. So the skinny dipper is your prime bait. And then as soon as that post bond comes and that, uh, you know, that fries around, or if you get, t if you get a cold front or a cold front, you know, throw, throw that little dipper. That little dipper will ca ca carry you through the summer very, very well. I'm going to say, well. you know, chatterbait, swim jig, trailer, 80% of the time, little dipper. Swimming it by itself, 50-50. Probably, probably a little more towards the little dipper because of post-spawn in summer. It's deadly in the summer when the water gets really clear, when the grass... On your lake, when the grass clears that water out in the summer and it gets to be a tough bite, that sucker is deadly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so let's uh, move on to uh, a little thing we like, we call tournament talk. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah, we got exciting, some tournaments going on. Exciting day today. Watching TV, watching the old TV a little bit today, and while we're working, listening to it, and uh, you know, 
those guys are catching some big fish. That Trey McKinney again, my God, that guy is just for for as young as he is in the in the 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 knowledge and the um you know how we always talk about uh fishing your gut and your instincts. You know, this kid is very instinctual and he has an instinct that is very, very advanced. Very advanced. Very, very impressive watching him make make some of the calls he made today and the moves he made today. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Mike, because this morning I was watching. I didn't get to watch it a lot, but he was on this pattern in the morning. I don't know if it's a pattern, but he's throwing top water. Yeah. And I know he could see him on his live, but he knew, like, all right, I'm going to throw this top water. He got one to bite, but it, it took the whole school to the boat. So he knew, yeah. like, now that screwed me up a little bit. Yeah. So he had to back off, let those fish go. Yeah. And then he started throwing like maybe a, a glide bait. Yeah. And then something else. Caught that six six pounder on a on a glide bait. It's crazy that they just they view it a little bit different. Yeah. Things that we never really thought. They're showing that absolutely we probably weren't as open minded as we thought we would be. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um. The other thing that, that I really like to see is Greg De Palma had a very solid tournament. Great day. Uh, good day. Good state start now. He's in 34th place, had 15 pound bag. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully he'll be able to uh, do that again tomorrow and, 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 or, or, or get that big bite, you know, Mike, have you ever been on that river? No, no, no. I'm get, that's a title river, right? Right. It's title. Right. You yeah. Know how high are it's a very small, very, small. very small tide tide. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very small tide. Now, of course, when you get closer to the ocean, it drops more. But um, what is the tide on the on that river, George? It's a very small tide, isn't it? Um, so that river actually flows backwards north. Yeah. So it's a lot like the uh, Saint Lawrence. Saint Lawrence. Um. So you know, the farther. <sighs> I mean, which direction that would be the farther north you go yeah you're getting closer to the tide is that correct uh no well the farther south you go you're getting closer to the tide because it's flowing from south to north so you're going to have a bigger tide here and a lesser tide up here yeah well the tide is affecting these guys even though it's not a big tide right they have a terrible tide because they have incoming tide. Um, so, you know, they're low water in the morning. Of course, it's changing every day by an hour, 45 minutes. And then, and then when that tide gets in, if you're in that more tidal zone, that those fish aren't eating good on that. That's why you, you saw that late afternoon flurry happen today. The tide turned to started going out. Yeah. But on top of that, you have a shad spawn. So this event and the last week's event on Harris, there was a, a, a solid shad spawn. This event has a really good shad spawn. And that, that Trey McKenney you guys are talking about, you know, he's tapped into that. He's made this big, long run uh forever and he's on school and fish and like Where, he, where's he running to uh you know i can't answer that yeah I, I i i didn't pay attention to that yeah i didn't see where he was running to. he's running um, a hell of a long way say it's john cox too he's running like forever but yeah they said like three hours one yeah day. yeah but a lot of that's idle zone um uh, manatee manatee speed limit zones and canal uh no wakes but um As soon as he got there, like instantaneous fish on a on a uh, walking bait of some sort, uh, Strike King sexy dog, ah. like right out the get, and you know so Shad spawn in the morning. You know you saw Scott Martin capitalizing on that. You saw Trey McKinney capitalizing on that. You saw um, Cliff Prince trying to capitalize on that. Didn't happen. He tried to capitalize on it. You know, he's fishing those cypress trees. They like to spawn on those. Um, 
you know, the shad, the sh the way that shad spawn works is that they, they shed they, the shad spawn at night, and they and, and it continues into the morning until the sun gets up pretty good. When the sun gets a down on the water angle, they're kind of like eh, done, and you know they disperse. Um, and while that shad spawn's going on, you're gonna if you watch closely tomorrow morning, you're gonna see. The walking baits, everybody was throwing some sort of a walking bait. They were throwing spooks. They were throwing that uh, sexy dog. Um, they were throwing, uh, John Cruz was throwing walking bait and a whopper plopper. Uh, you're going to see mm -hmm. swim jig tomorrow. Tomorrow, now that they got their bead on this, on this shad spawn, Tomorrow, you're going to see white swim jigs uh, flying through the air. Like, have you ever seen the medieval pictures of the archers on top of the wall at the freaking castle when they cut loose on the arrows? That's how the white swim jigs are going to look tomorrow, flying through the air. <laughs> because you're getting bit, right? So you're probably going to see a little bit of chatterbait action. Um, <clears throat> and it's you got to make hay when the sun shines, right? Yeah. Schooling fish. In other words, post spawn. Yeah. Mike, we're watching a post spawn tournament. Yeah. Except for one thing. They're still spawners. John Cox is running three hours to fish bedding fish. Yeah. In a spring that you and I were in on 40 Lake, years ago. Wow. Up on Lake George. Well, off of there. Um, There's a couple guys that have had numerous betting fish marked. Okay, so there is some guys fishing betting fish. Oh, yeah, very, very few. Yeah, there's definitely. I believe Drew Cook had 40 fish marked for today. Okay. How'd, how'd he do? He didn't do well. He had like nine or 12 pounds or something, yeah. 10 pounds. Yeah. But, you know, not bad. Yeah. You got to understand, you know, we've said this how many times, guys? Four-day tournament in Florida, 10 pounds can be awesome. 10 yeah. pounds today, 10 pounds tomorrow, get you to fish on Saturday when you can drop the hammer on them, mm -hmm. okay, and to get yourself to Sunday. So, you know, all these guys that are like 10 pounds, 12 pounds, that's really good. Keep that in mind. It's a post-spawn event. Yeah. You know, we saw what? One seven pounder today, couple sixes, right? Florida, you know, Florida is different. And I'll tell you what really messes with your head if, if you're not like totally dialed in. Even in the peak spawning months of January and February, when the tour season's chip, typically open in Florida, you fish a four day event on Okeechobee. And one of those days, you're going to catch 10 pounds. Yeah. And if you don't, you're not going to win because a cold front, wind, whatever. It happens. Yeah, and George, you were talking about the post spawn. You could tell when they were weighing in the fish just with how they look. Skinny. You know, maybe a lot bigger. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 definitely are post spawn. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, there was one fish. There was one fish. A guy showed up today to the camera. And I think at the time, Lunker was like, 513 he's like now nah, i don't need to weigh it it was probably like a month ago it was almost seven pounds you know so that's interesting so you got post spawn you got um you know you got guys doing all kinds of things all over the place it's only day one yeah but exciting you know, stuff I'll tell you something that I've been really inter I found really interesting last week on the Harris chain and this week on the St. John's is Trey McKinney um, and a couple of other anglers relying on glide baits. They, 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 they threw them a lot. They you did. know, they're pulling fish up. 
They're 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 going through these schools. They're getting a big bite on a glide bait, multiple times per day. These especially these fish that are schooling on shad. Um, last week they were they were they were fishing shell bi- shell bars with schools of fish on them. They were firing them. They were throwing them glide baits out there and getting that big bite. Uh, that I I don't think I've ever seen played out on Florida waters. In all the years that I've been following this game. So to me, you know, that's a major learning thing for me because, you know, I'm really loving the swim bait lifestyle and situations that I wouldn't necessarily think. I'm to the point now where it's like, yeah, if there's feeding fish, I'm throwing a frick swim bait at them, a glide or something of that nature. Um, and we're, we're, this is a classroom that we have here. I mean, we're lucky to have this kind of camera work and to pay attention to it and to learn what we're learning. Right. Uh, the other thing that's playing pretty strong because it's post spawn is the buzz bait. Right. I saw, uh, uh, John Cruz throwing a buzz bait lot today. Yeah. Buzz bait, buzz bait played. I love throwing a buzzbait post spawn. I freaking love it. Just that early post spawn, they eat a buzzbait. Big blade, little blade. Oh, I agree with you, Mike. But one thing I really love, too, is just the fact that they're catching them all kinds of different ways. Oh, yeah. I think uh, this tournament here allows for a lot of the guys to fish their strengths instead of having to do something they don't want to. I I like that kind of tournament. Yeah. You know. Uh yeah, and I also found it interesting that some of these anglers either from no experience on this water or a lot of experience on this water made the tactical decision to uh, to get away from the tides cuz on this body of water you can go south and you can lock through to Rodman and or other lakes via running and, you know, get off that river channel, get off that river system. So I guess technically you're still on the river system, but speaking of locks, but you've eliminated that, that tidal effect. So, you know, if you're not like sure about the tides or if you're having, you know, they only had a day and a half of practice. If you weren't able to deal with the tides or figure the tides out, you can say, hey, I'm going to go to Robin or I'm going to go to, you know, one of these other areas that is not tidal affected and take that variable out of play and still find, you know, a shad spawn, still find, you know, a, a bank that has post spawn fish, or whatever the case may be, still find the proper cup of flipping water. Because, you know, flipping's playing. The jig's playing. A lot of shell bars, the jig's playing. Dragging a jig on a shell bar is playing. So, And shell bars are, you know, they're hard spots. You know, we have them on our rivers. We have them on our tidal waters. And they're, they're basically hard spots on the bottom that mussels have colonized for years. And they are clean hard spots fat fish like to spawn on them um and at post spawn they like to gather on them because they're a clean spot in the grass so they're money and finding them uh takes a little bit of learning curve to reading your graph properly but you know on side imaging they they shine they shine bright in an otherwise soft bottom um, so they're fishing a lot of shell bars, you know, and that, that current's important, be it wind, wind driven current or what have you, the shatter spawning on the shell bars in the morning, the bass are ganging up on them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, this is all, and, and we, and we practice the same stuff up here in the Northeast. It's practiced all over the country. You know, we have a lot of shell bars that we fish. Um, Potomac River, Chesapeake, Chesa- Bay, Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay. Even on the Susquehanna River, we have areas of tremendous shell. 
Uh, so, yeah. That's what's going on there, fellas. Now, last week was the Harris chain. Um, yeah. You know, like eight lake, eight lake chain. And last week was, again, a shad spawn and a lot of just traditional vegetation. You know, the swim jig played big time last week. The chatterbait played white because of that shad spawn played big time. Various bait fish colors. Um, you know, the golden shiner is, this is a Florida original right here. This is Florida 101, the golden shiner chatterbait. Um, the white swim jig, the white chatterbait. Glide baits again. Glide baits played last week. Um, crank bait. Crank bait. Crank, the guy that, that won was it, awesome. Guy that won it was on a a big shell bar that had an average population of big fish. It didn't have a big population of big fish. It has an average population of big fish. And he was cranking them with a 5XD. How the hell do you find that? Uh, years on the water. He's fished. He's been fishing those lakes since he was in college. Yeah. He's a col He come out of the college program. So he fished numerous college events there. Um, the other thing he did that was completely unconventional Cranking a 5X day is not a Florida thing. Yeah. The other thing he did was, you know, Tennessee River Ledge 101, 3 eighth ounce bucktail hair jig, you know, cast it out, let it hit the bottom, one, two, three, four fast cranks, let it pendulum tight line back to the bottom again. How deep of water was that? Is that a channel or something? It was a shell bar oh. in the middle of the lake. Oh. Um, not really super deep. 5XD deep. Yeah, 5XD. I'm sure he was grinding. 12, 12 feet or something. Is that what it was? Yeah. 14. Wow. Um, wow. You know. He was, you see how fast he was cranking that thing? Yeah, he had to. He, he actually would feel the bait banging off the fish. And then he would kill it. And then he would jerk it a couple times. And then he would rip the hell out of it. And then he would kill it. And then he'd eat it. He only got a couple bites a day there. Yeah. He are, By the time he got to that bar every day, he already had a limit. He stopped in Lake Dora at a limit spot, got a limit, went there, and then it was it was very grind them out. Long intervals between fish. He did have on the third day, I think he had back to back did, like yeah. an eight and a five. Yeah. But then he went hours without a bite. Yeah. Um, you know, they did some flipping on that tournament last week. You know, the old D bomb came out to play. Um I believe it was Ed Lochran did really well flipping. Oh, good to see him do well. Like yeah. that top 10. Well, he's, you know. a, he's a good guy. He's a good fisherman. 101 flipping, baby. Yeah. Good. good. 101 flipping. Great fisherman. You know, the, the Harris chain, a lot of those lakes have brush piles in them. So they had, they had like hurricanes and they dumped a bunch of brush in the lakes. They had people building brush piles. There's, Tremendous network of brush piles in those lakes. So it was a lot of brush piles. There was guys drop shot in brush piles. There was guys dragging jigs on the brush piles. Um, they were glide baiting the brush piles. They were Carolina rigging. They were, you know, throwing a lot of jerk baits. And the jerk baits play on this week, too. And they wacky rig. Yeah. So, awesome. you know, stuff that we learn at these events, guys. Then you have Trey McKinney going to a lock, you know, and fishing that current in that lock and just catching, catching those fish. Well, that created an issue too. Yeah, the guys didn't think it was legal. They're still kind of throwing digs at it. Yeah, they don't think it's he legal. He wasn't the only one there. Yeah, he didn't think it was legal. Tyler Rivette was even farther up into the lock than he was. Yeah. And they both called the tournament director and sought clarification on the matter yeah ahead of time yeah. so raise all the hell you want yeah that's true listen there's a lot of controversies going on in the world of professional bass angling these days um obviously you know we have a huge controversy over fishing boat docks um we have got open discussion about 
buying information at the highest levels of the game. Open. It's out there. Mm. Okay? Purchasing information. We have just conflict and strife. So, you know, it's an interesting time in the professional ranks. And, you know, generally speaking, the noisiest ones are the sources of some of the problems. Not always. You know, sometimes they're just spreading a very good message. You know, I mean, we all love fish and boat docks. Um, stuff's going on. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, you got. Uh, let's sit back and watch, but let's pay attention smartly. You got Jacob Wheeler that, I mean, he's been. Destroying. Des yeah. I mean, he's killing everything over there, and they got him cheating left and right. You know, everybody's talking about him cheating left and right. But he's not. I'm saying that everybody's saying it though. That's what happens when this you is, win. This is this is the stuff that you're dealing it's with. It's the you're, same thing in every sport. Yeah, if it doesn't you matter. Are, if you are dominant, people come after you. And he is dominant. He is next level. Yeah. He's got this forward facing thing. He's lethal with it. it all of his electronics, plus his fishing, just in general. Well, yeah, next level. Him and Canal. Well, those I mean, two guys. Every tournament. Those well, those two guys are. Probably the best forward-facing sonar fishermen it, out there. You know, I, I they 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 won a lot more a, more money on it than anybody else for sure. I don't know about that. Who? Well, I mean, consider the league. No, but just catching those fish like I they can, catch I on forward-facing. I see what George is saying though, because they're in a league that pays you to. Catch as many two pounders as you can. Right, that's what I'm saying. I wonder how they would do. That doesn't make you the best. To say if if you could only catch five, how would their how would their weights compare to if they fished against the Bass Masters? Because every two pounder ain't gonna matter. Well, I mean, so I mean, I'm agreeing with you guys that Jordan Lee, Jordan, Jacob Wheeler's like Jordan Lee did very well in the in the uh, in the uh, MLF. He come over here to the Bass Masters and he's kicking ass. Yeah. Kids kicking ass. Well, defined very well. What, Jordan Lee? Yeah. Defined very well. I know I know well, he was a, he was I know the, he won the first tournament they ever had. Yeah, but he's he's been in the money and making cuts the whole time. He's been a very very successful very successful successful on the MLF. Well, I mean, you not as successful you as You probably should have some stats up to 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 really get into the conversation. Well, you know, because he's done all right. Yeah. Well, bring Wheeler back over. We'll see. I, I would. Say, I guarantee well, Wheeler would be freaking right there. Well, I would say what we're finding out though is Wheeler's a badass. Wheeler fisherman. and and Cadell are definitely the two best on. Making those guys fishing. find those fish like it's going out of but freaking I think style. That style that they're fishing, yeah, fits what they do. They figured out a almost a they figured out how, they figured they figured out a way to win on the MLF, they but did. but. You don't think those guys could go out there and figure out a way to win oh, I'm sure on a five fish, uh, a five yeah. fish uh, bag? Not thing? as often as they're winning on Bass Pro Tour. No, but they'll win. They'll be they'll be they'll be as probably as good as anybody on it. I'm telling you, I'll say that remains to be seen. I t I know it. I'd like to see it. I know it. That Wheeler's good, man. And he, why would he leave? There's no reason for him to leave. Winning everything. Look at the money he's making. He's, well, he's, he's never going to leave. That's not the discussion. But you know, if it, if if it was just like there was all this stuff going on and it was just falling apart, I tell you that guy would go and it jump. falling apart. He would go jump in the opens and he'd qualify one year. He'd qualify one year. That's my bet. Yeah. That's well, how that's how good those guys are. I'll tell you what. When he does that, yeah, we will have a bet. Yeah. I, I guarantee you. He'll okay, do I got a question for it's you. It's easy to make claims. So there's, well, no, there's no reason for him to do it. Though. Last he'll... year, was it last year they did five or last year it was two pounders again? Last year was. The year before last was five. Okay, yeah. the year that they did five. Mm -hmm. Was Wheeler as dominant as he is when they go to catch as many as he can? 
I'd have to look it up. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what his I stats think he's were. more dominant when it's catches. I think them two have a formula that they use to catch. They know they just they're better than everybody else at catching numbers. There's no doubt. Yeah. Well, if you can catch, he won though. He won during that five, that five fish deal too. Did he? Yeah. All right, he's a great. Well, angler. I don't. I, again, I, again, we would have to have those numbers in front of us to 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 make yeah, these he, conversations. Yeah. Did he work? I think it was up on a thousand St. Lawrence. Oh yeah, that was the that was the tournament though. Floggers that they were basically catching the same fish over and over and over and over. Oh because, no, that was that was that was the uh, that was a that was a, yeah, that I, tournament I, right there uh, led to uh, some problems. Yeah, that yeah. was that was a bad one. Yeah, that that was that was one of the pr problematic events. Yeah. They made rules for that. They fixed the problem. I mean, I don't like oh. the whole thing. I'm just saying you put Jacob Wheeler and Dusk Canal and oh, they're great. And on the elite series, and he, they're 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 top twenty five guys for sure, and they're winning a couple a year. I just wish to God I could get some action on this. I I I would I'd I'd put money on it. Jacob Wheeler's badass, man. Get it going, George. Again, again, again. I think Jacob Wheeler is one of the best fishermen. He's like uh, he he was ahead of his. Jacob Wheeler. Okay, I'll tell you what. This Trey McKinney. Yeah, that's what Jacob Wheeler was like when he was 19. Yeah, he still has it. No shit. He still has it. But don't go around telling he's me a fish whisper. Don't go around telling me that he's just going to jump into the elites and start. No, he's going to jump in. Ass. No, he's going to jump in the opens. He's going to kick everybody's ass and qualify in one year when, when, when the time comes. But he's not going to ever look anywhere else because he's winning so much money on the MLF. Why? Why would you go anywhere? When, when it goes somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So that's what they're waiting on. You know, either Bass is going to buy them or MLF is going to buy Bass. Bass going to buy shit. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, when you're the, when you're the, the when you're the peak of existence, other people want what you have. You don't want what they have. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because there's really no competition there anymore. Well, unless Bass as... wants to increase their, you know, increase their uh, their deal because they have a great, you know, uh, amateur side. So yeah. if it, let's just say that all goes away, yeah, then you know maybe Bass starts up a version of the of of the BFLs, but they don't have to buy anything to do that. No, but you can buy the name, be you know, for the name, so it stays stay BFL and it stays this. Let's say it's going to cost. The only way money. I would do it if I was Bass Masters, I would buy Major League Fishing. But the only way I would do it is I'd make Bass Masters exactly what it already is. Don't change what works. Yeah, but make Major League Fishing what a lot of other people are asking for right now, where you limit the amount of. Um, electronics and stuff and stuff like that. Create a league that's geared more towards traditional fishing and let Bass Masters what it is. You could do that. Yeah. But they're not going to. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's a it's an interesting discussion slash debate that we will always have because we're passionate bass fans. Um but George, I have a question for you. And it's all good. Because we're in a fourth tournament of the season. And every year I like to ask you this question. And the question is, at the point that we're at right now, what are your feelings for for the year so far? Um, and that's that that's pretty cool because, you know, we had weather. You know, our first two tournaments uh, on the Elite Series were cold. Windy. Um, they were they were held in in Texas, you know, on on fish factories, and and it, and and it was proven by the results. So you know, the 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 outcome didn't surprise me at all. The way the outcome occurred surprised the hell out of me because traditionally, I shouldn't say it surprised the hell out of me. It surprised me. Traditionally, in in on Sam Rayburn, 
Um, or was it Talita Bend? The first one. I think it was Sam Rayburn. Might have been Talita Bend. Whatever the first one was. Uh, traditionally, you know, back in the day, you would rattle trap grass lines and grass flats. That's where, I mean, Rayburn Red. That's where the red rattle trap came from. Yeah. You would crank uh, offshore staging areas with a deep plug. You would Carolina rig, mm -hmm. and you would flip. Mm -hmm. That was traditionally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not what you do when you have forward-facing sonar hunters that are highly skilled in their craft. Hunting. Um, so, you know, it. what has been made perfectly clear to me is what I first thought of when I started learning forward-facing sonar. What I always thought Bass did in pre-spawn is correct 10% of the day. So basically, 90% of the time in my existence as a fisherman, I was wrong. Mm. And the reason that it was so right for 10% of the time is because they were all there for 10% of the time. It was like fish, bang, 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 bang. The rest of the time when you're not catching them, they weren't there. Um, Because they were just like randomly just swimming around. Cruising around. Things. And, you know, so a lot of, and, and this has been said on this program before, this has been said, um, you know, other other places. A lot of what we thought we knew we don't is is not right. But when it's right, it's you know it's right about ten percent of the time. So I was kind of surprised to see that. You know, we did have a couple guys throwing the trap to traditional trap and having some success. We did have some crankbait success, but for the most part, it was forward facing. Um, and, and with the weather. So, yeah. Um, now on the, on the Florida swing, um, you know, primarily post spawn events and they're living right up to their, to their, um, billing and what, what should be, what, what should be happening. Um, you'll notice these are much less forward facing events. It's still playing a little bit, but they're, it's much less. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. You know, four, three, and three, and three and a quarter tournaments in. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh, some fishermen I thought would be doing better than than what they are. Other fishermen are doing better than what I thought they are. But that's that kind of stuff's hard to predict. Well, I mean, you're not even even touch it. You didn't even get to it. What's that? 500 tournaments. And the homage that is being paid to this angler who revolutionized fishing and who brought so much to this sport and how Bass is following him through this last season of his career. You know, and documenting that. I think it's so cool how they're paying homage to this guy and putting a camera in his boat, you know, in every tournament, trying to get him to, you know, and paying this homage to this man, you know, who, who, I mean, 500 tournaments. Mike, so if you fish 10 tournaments a year, yeah, you would have to fish, what, 50 years? Yeah. 10 tournaments a year. That's what he did. There's no way anybody could do that now. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Trey. He's 19. He's 19. Yeah, but they fish eight. He might fish a few other tournaments. So how many tournaments did they have back in the day a year? Yeah. I don't know. Usually about eight. 
Yeah, and then what tournaments did they did mean. they did they count? Did they count the opens? Did they count the well he had the classics? They didn't have opens back then. They yeah. had they had well, I'm just saying. I'm saying, are they counting if 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 you would count them for of moving forward? Well, would, I mean, you, he had you, classics. He had, and then and no, then, no. I'm saying for this Trey McKinney to hit 500, will you count the everything, opens? Everything by bass. See, I don't know if you can do that because they didn't have that for. Well, uh, he fished everything by bass. I think it's any bass tournament. But what's interesting about it is Trey McKinney probably will never fish another open because a lot of these guys don't. So you're oh. literally going to fish eight tournaments a year. It's going to be really hard. But my question was, and now that George kind of said, I do remember Bassmasters always had a lot of like specialty tournaments. Trey McKay's in 10th place for the, uh, the opens right now. Angler of the year. Oh, he's fishing again. Yeah. Oh, I did not know. Oh that. yeah. Well then he could 10th because, place because if you're looking at nine EQs plus eight, uh elites a, a year yeah there you go he's getting there yeah he's gonna get he's gonna, but who he's knows there. he might that's he, interesting well he might retire earlier he might not go that that long he might say you know i'm not gonna do what rick clun you know he, he's i mean it's hard to do as a as an older gentleman the the body how, you know how much how good a shape that guy's got to be in to fish Seven straight days in a row on on the water. I mean, you know how it, well, he's doing it two weeks in a row here. We do we do three days in a row, man, and we're out for two weeks. We're set up in the freaking couch, man, coming home from work, and you're like, "What happened to you? Well, I fished last week for three days. I'm dead." That's not that's not exactly fair, but because that's the way I feel. Yeah, but you're also working a full time job. Right up to the minute you get to fish those three days, and then you're right back at your full time job again. Yeah. So dead. it's the same difference. Freaking dead, man. Dead. Kills it's you. It's impressive. It's impressive as hell. 500 tournaments. Rick Clun. I mean, today I was such a cool thing to watch him start that that thing. And then, like George said, you know, you get they get to his spot. He's telling the camera crew, you know, what to do. Stay the hell out. You know, don't don't. Say, get away from my targets. Get away from my targets. You know, this guy calling all those guys. That's how competitive he still is. He is so freaking competitive that he's telling the camera, but it's get the hell away from him. You know, you're, you're screwing up my fishing. He had his best finish. What are you doing? He had his best finish in quite a long while. Uh, yeah. What? At 20, Fork? Uh, top 25th last week. Yeah, he did pretty good last week. Top 25. I thought he had a good finish in Texas. You might have. But he had top 25 last week. Top 20, I think it was. Good for him. If I'm fishing at his age, I'll be happy. Oh, my God. What he's doing. Yeah, competitive fishing like that. Is damn impressive. And, he, and, and he's relevant. Tw a top 20 finish. And then a good one a good one at Fork. And, I mean, the guy's relevant. It's pretty, It's you know. He's a legend. We had other guys that did legend had the legend status that came in and 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 really couldn't perform. I mean, look at uh, Larry Nixon. He did it for one year and he got out. Well, he he wanted to retire with bass. Yeah, he got out. He's already planning on getting out. Yeah. Well, I think with what what impresses me the most about Rick Clun, and I was just watching a show on him. He's a thinker, and what I like the most though is he's not stuck in. Like, think of all the years he fished, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, and now. He's not stuck in any era. He wants to be in the area that he's in, so he's always trying to learn the new stuff as best as he can to compete. That's hard for anybody to do. And, you know, that's what I think makes him special. Yeah. You know? I pulled a little fact check for you. What? About your Trey McKenney in 10th place on the opens? Yeah. No. No? He made that one up. No, That's... I saw it on TV this morning when I was watching. That was the... last year's. Trevor McKenney. Oh, Trevor McKinney. No brother? relation. Oh, no. No relation? No. Oh. But it... Hey, we got we to give you that one. I Mike. saw a team McKinney. I'm like, pretty good. I'm like, oh. Trevor, Trevor's having a hell of a year. Yeah. So is Trey. I saw a team McKinney. on different circuits. I saw T. McKinney. And I'm like, oh shit! This you know, guy, this you know kid's me, everywhere. Man. I'm just gonna pop a fact check in there every now and well, again. Well, is he fishing the tournaments though? No. Did you look through through the? 
No. He's not fishing. Well, I didn't think he was, but you know what's even more impressive about him? What he's doing. Some of those guys are fishing him. Is oh, it? Of course. It opens. You, you look of at course. all the all the. And I thought I did think George was going to go here with this. The first three tournaments, I think we had two rookies win out of three tournaments. That doesn't surprise me as much as I thought it would. Doesn't? Because they're spectacular electronics anglers. But does it, this does surprise me? This makes me more. Each tournament, I get more impressed with the tray, right? Mm -hmm. Because last tournament, you know, um, Melican had a, he fell off. And he's fallen off a little bit this week. Today, that JT, he just, I think he had four pounds. Um, one or two of the other guys fell off. Yeah. He's just so consistent. Nothing he is. knocks him down. He is. Uh, I think those other guys will... You know, once you get back on the reservoirs and stuff, I think you'll see, uh, you know, those other guys really bounce back because that's what they do. Now, um, we, let's stay on this 500. Wonder where. Um, Are we going to call him Mr. 500? Yeah. Well, I wonder where who else who else could be close to, to it right now? Nobody. I bet you there's nobody within 100 tournaments. So our boy uh, from California um ish ish monroe now that's a guy who fish like now not just bass events but you know that that freaking guy fished uh, flw tour and bass tour for years he had two boats one on the west coast one on the east coast ish. yeah ish monroe yeah but would they they wouldn't count those tournaments no they wouldn't count the flws but that sucker's been fishing some tournaments he fished a lot of opens he fished a lot of uh, all the bass for a lot of years. Bass, a lot of opens and different I things. I could see him at. I could see him at uh, one fifty. Wonder how many is he he's at. I would say Kevin would have been up there. Kevin fished since he was ni nineteen years old, um, or twenty, nineteen. Did but he, that's did he a start great when he was nineteen. Question, didn't, he, didn't he start when he was nineteen? I don't know. Yeah. I could see him. I could see him at 150. Yeah, nowhere close to five. No. No, I'm just saying maybe, you know, if he if he stays at it, because I think he's in his 40s. You yeah, know, he's going to be. Uh, they're going to have to put one of them stair lifts that goes up the stairs. If he would have kept. Instead of the pole to get in the well, boat, I'm just saying. It's gonna be a, I'm just saying that you know he like was a, a guy, big lazy boy mounted on the front of the trailer. He was a guy that if he would have stayed fishing <laughs> bass the whole time, you know, I wonder where he where he'd have been. I mean, he fished everything for years, man. I like I, I like I like guys like that. That he's were, he's the ultimate grinder. He was a serious grinder. He fished everything, and, and the and the guy that Kenta Kamara, the ultimate yeah, grinder, and um, our jet boat Johnny guy that. Runs the the little aluminum boats. Poche. Poche. Keith Poche. He was, I he worry was about the guy you just talked about, Kenta Kamara. Is that the guy that comes on there and says he drinks like eight Red Bulls a day? That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. For that ain't long. gonna work. No, that ain't gonna all work. Red Bulls. Eight a day. Well, we got a we got a uh, uh, a guy that we that we've worked with that drinks how many how many does he drink? Jack. Well, I mean, he doesn't drink eight. He first of all, he doesn't drink Red Bull. He drinks sugar-free monsters. Monster, freaking energy drink. And he drinks probably four a day. Yeah, four, four or five a day, which is half of eight. Well, red, red, red Bulls are Red Bulls are eight point four ounces, and I think the um, monsters are like you know much bigger. Yeah, he's drinking like sixteen ounce monsters. Yeah, he drinks the big ones. Well, I don't know. He might be drinking the big Red Bulls. I don't. They know. don't make big Red Bulls. They only make them in 8.4 ounce to limit your and smaller for cardiac and arrest. Well, 8.4 and smaller because I think Red Bull's like the most potent freaking thing out there. I, I, I was I was actually afraid to drink them things because I was like, they got to kill you. I don't know. <laughs> they got to kill you. I don't know. I don't know. I know eight a day is pretty good. Yeah. All now, right. I mean. The guy <laughs> seems to be doing well with him. He's catching the shit out of fish everywhere he goes. That's He doesn't sleep. He just keeps drinking rope. Yeah. 
can't. He can practice. That. He can practice ninety six straight hours. I bet you when he crashes at night, man, it's like a major crash. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, guys. Anything else, Nick? No, I'm just excited about tomorrow. I'm excited yeah. about you know getting the SummerSlam stuff kicked off. I am too, man. I'm ready for SummerSlam. I'm I'm excited for the for the whole one month long season to see all the guys signing up. And I'm excited to do the tournament again and be down there and hang out with all everybody and see everybody down there. Uh, don't forget, sign up starts tomorrow um, for our SummerSlam tournament. Two hundred fifty dollar purchase. Jackal G Loomis, Jackal or uh, Jackal G Loomis, Shimano and Power Power Pro products. Two hundred fifty dollars per boat. And uh, there's applications to be downloaded online and or picked up here at the store. Or you can drop it off at the store and do your purchasing in the shop. Or you can do it online. We can't wait for it. We hope you guys get, in, get involved and try it out this year. I know there's a lot of guys on the fence last year. This year we made more room for you. So, yeah. Well, you got anything, George? I'm 100% uh, ready to watch GDP. Drop the hammer on them tomorrow. I am too. Good luck. Good I'll luck be getting up early. Good luck to GDP. And getting ready. Uh, oh, live mix starts at seven. Oh, I got uh, say congratulations to uh, uh, Jake Glusick. Uh, Pete Glusick's son fished. Uh, has started his his high school tournament career um, in Jersey, and he weighed a him and his partner weighed. I think his partner's name is Josh Pop. I uh, hope, hope, hope I don't get it wrong. I think it was Josh, but uh, Jake and Josh, they weighed 20 pounds for their first tournament over 20 pounds. So congratulations to those guys. And uh, spectacular. I think that's you know, in, a, in, a, in a lake in New Jersey, which is, which is tough fishing. And uh, Jake caught, caught the big one on a glide bait. And a chatterbait, and they and they caught him on chatterbait. So. I imagine the the dean was quite proud to tell you that story. The dean called me. And first thing out of his mouth is, "Man, I'm a proud dad. I got <laughs> I got I got I got to tell somebody. I got to talk to somebody." So we talked on the phone about that, and uh, he was he just wouldn't. He was just blabbering, man. It was just flowing out of him. So congratulations. Uh, and and you know another thing was Pete Pete was the captain, and he said he just watched this whole thing happen, and these kids were just making these cast and making these calling shots and doing all this stuff and it was i can just, see pete sitting behind the steering wheel with that big freaking grin yeah uh just proud as proud as a peacock yeah and it was that's awesome so congratulations that's to awesome. him all right guys well thank you so much for stopping by and we'll see you at the next tackle shop live Right there, you took my breath away. A young and pretty, was it just a dream? The next day, you called me up. You told me I'm your little buttercup. You came over and you fell into my arms. Well, I know what I feel. Please tell me your love is real. You made me smile when I think of you. 